right, what's going on there, everybody? All right, so we're gonna talk about tog fishing. I'm gonna specifically talk about tog fishing in the bay a little bit more than going into offshore wrecks. It's kind of little two different realms. So it'd be almost like a whole nother seminar doing that. I'm gonna focus on the bay. If you got a boat, you know, pretty much you can get out there and do it. Even if it's a small boat on a nice day, you can still go to the bay and fish. So we're just gonna start off with rods, reels, line, all the basics. Uh, as far as a tog rig goes, there's two that I use. It's gonna be this one hook bottom rig and a jig. So the jig is gonna be something we're gonna talk about a lot. It's definitely very, very effective for tog fishing. All right, so this basic rig right here, I'm not gonna get too specific with the reel or rod, okay? I just like a rod that has good action in the tip so you can feel a bite and it's got plenty of backbone so you can pull that fish in. Uh, I, don't, I don't like a rod with a parabolic blend, a bend, a bend that goes through the whole rod. I prefer one that has a backbone to it, okay? So your main line is gonna be braid. It's either gonna be 40 to 50 pound test braid. I've used all the way down to 20. I've used, you know, 65, but 40 to 50 is gonna be, it's gonna be the best. As far as your leader line goes, so swivels, this 200 pound swivel, you can go down to 150. This is just a 200 pound. They're not line shot or nothing like that at all. My leader right here is 60 pound test leader, okay? Uh, like I've said, I've used heavier, I've gone lighter, I've gone heavier. 60 pound is, right where I, is about right where I like to use. Now this rig is a little bit different than a standard tog rig because it would just be a loop coming off here to the hook. I do my rig like this, it has a little bit more play into it like that, you'll get more bites, I promise you. So growing up, I always did a rig, just had a single loop coming off of it and I fished it like that. And I've tried multiple rigs and this one right here just seems to do better than that, than that uh, loop does. As far as your hook goes, this is a 2-0 octopus hook. It's made by owner. You can, octopus, some people like gamagatsu, some people like owner. You know, that's a personal preference depending on what size hook you like. Uh, growing up fishing, I even used, uh, started using live bait hooks when I first started, you know, switched over and I realized that this octopus hook works a lot better. So this hook's a 2-0. You can go up to a 3-0 if you want, but a 2-0 is what I use. Out in the bay, your average weight you're going to be putting on this is going to be six to eight ounces. So, you know, obviously the lighter the, lighter the better, but sometimes you got to go to that eight ounces. And if I have to, I will, because with this rig, I try to stay vertical. So that's a little bit about this rig. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this jigging, and then we're going to move on talking about a little, a little something else. So. So that's basic rig. I'll just hand this down. Y'all can pass it around just so y'all can see how the rig is, see how the hooks are. All right. Now this is new to tog fishing. I've been doing this for about four years now. So it's jigging for tog. It's a whole nother ball game. First year I started, the first time that I started with it, I, didn't, I couldn't really catch exactly the technique to use and how to do it. And I really didn't like it that much. I didn't have confidence in it. It's something that it's just so different from the tr traditional rig. So it's something you're gonna have to play with. What I realized with this is it works better on rock piled structure. This is almost the opposite of that. This here, you want, I want you to be moving it around. When you drop this down to the bottom, you're bouncing it, kind of smacking it, letting it sit there, smack, bouncing it. Your traditional rig is gonna be the opposite and that, and that you want to be still as possible and I'll talk about that too, a little bit more. But, so the same thing with the leader. I got 60 pound leader. Now this I run a little bit longer, this leader line, you can see my notch right there. I run this a little bit longer because I'm usually using this on the tubes of the, the tunnel, on the bridge tunnel, okay? That's what I'm usually using this at the most. I've used it on pylons, it's not as effective. I've used it on rubble piles and wrecks that are, you know, like rubble piles and stuff like that. It also does work well. This won't snag nearly as much as a regular rig. So you can take this, bounce this all around them rocks, and I've used the same jig all day long. And I, you know, everybody knows tog fishing and fishing on the tunnel, if y'all ever have that, you know, you're new, uh, you will lose a lot of rigs, you know, with them rocks. So, so this is a whole, a whole other type of fishing. You can really get the fish fired up. Same thing with the line. Um, uh, here, obviously I got this on a spinning reel, just to show y'all that with this jig, you don't have to go with a bait caster. You know, you can go, you can go with a spinning reel. So, either or. Um, this pole right here is pretty much the same style, as in it's got plenty of backbone to it, but it's got a soft tip, so I can feel that bite. You definitely want to be able to feel that bite, but it's got plenty of backbone. So I'll give this here to pass around. I wish I had, I, the size hook on that, that's a 3 aught that they put on that one. 
So I usually like to have a PowerPoint up here for y'all because of water temperature. The water temperature, I kind of break it down, the seasons in the bay, as in a spring and a fall season. And y'all see the water temperature, it's a little easy for y'all to correlate how the bite goes. So, so, so those are the two rigs. We're gonna go ahead and talk bait now. So for bait, my favorite bait personally is blue crab. You can use multiple, multiple baits and it's not, they're not always gonna be biting on you know, blue crab and that's just what they always want. I'm, I've been out one day and they're, they're biting on blue crab like crazy. You go to that same spot, they don't want it as much. You use green crab, which you can't use anymore, but let's say uh, filler crab. You use filler crab and it works really, really well. The key to sticking with bait is I always like to have more than one bait on the boat. That's for one. Everything in tog fishing, I try to prep as much as I can before I go out there. So what I do is, is if I'm going fishing with blue crab, which is my preferred bait, what I do is, is the night before, I'm cutting it in fours, I'm putting it in a container so it's all ready to go when I'm out there. I don't got to cut anything up on the boat. If the bite cuts on just for a little bit, I don't got to worry about cutting up for extra bait. I'm not doing any of that. It's already done the day before I go out there. So one little trip and, and secret that I do to that to help it out is, is when you cut those blue crabs up into fours and you quarter them in there, what I do after that is, is I'll take two or three peeler crabs. You're gonna mince those peeler crabs up, just kind of mush them up to nothing and put that on top. That pheromone that they have is gonna spread throughout. The rest of that crab you have is gonna have, give it more smell. So they, they feed a lot on sight, but also on smell, the two things they feed on the most. So they really wanna be able to see things and they also, that smell can draw, can draw that fish to you. So with the filler, so with the filler crab, I, I, you, I don't kill it, but I will rip this claw off, that big claw. Basically what that does is, is it'll kind of spin a little bit on your rig, it pulls on a little bit more current, and it's something that they can grab on and kind of uh, pluck your uh, crab off sometimes. So <laughs> the same thing with that jig, it would be the same thing you're doing with your one hook bottom rig, you're, you're tipping it with whatever bait you're using. So typically, and the, when it's a little bit warmer, I'm using blue crab, I'm using filler crab, okay? Those are the two things I'm primarily using. When the water temperature drops down, some of those sea bass start to go away a little bit, some of those oyster toes start to go away a little bit, then you can start switching over. You can use clam, you can use oysters, you can use shrimp, you can use all those things. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be surprised dropping a clam down there when that water gets cold, how, how fast the tog will suck that thing up. You'd really be surprised. So same thing with shrimp as well. Like I said, I like to bring more than one bait on the boat because you know they might be hitting on something one day and hitting on something the next. I like to be able to, to give them something a little bit different and see what they want. So even though you're tog fishing and you're using a bottom rig like this, it's still a type of finesse fishing you're doing no matter what. When I'm out there on the boat and I'm using, and I'm using this rig right here, the one hook bottom rig, I'm dropping down to the bottom, let's say I'm in 30 foot of water. I'm dropping down, in my mind, I'm guesstimating how far I'm going down. When I feel like I'm about five foot from the bottom, I start slowing, slowing down, easing. I wanna to touch that bottom, I wanna to touch down on them. They're visual fish. They're seeing that bait come down anyway. They're looking up at it, it's coming down. So it's a good presentation. You're about four or five foot before it hits the bottom, then you ease down and touch down bottom. You don't wanna just, have it going down there and bang on a rock, just smack on the bottom or whatnot. They do get spooked very easy, especially the bigger fish. The bigger fish are the smarter fish. So they will, they will get spooked. Sometimes it's harder to get them to bite. The smaller fish are a little bit, you know, a little bit dumber. I ease that thing down to the bottom. Patience with the tog bite. Patience is key. If you feel that bite and you go to set the hook, you're going to swing and missing all day long. Very patient with it. They're going to bump it once usually. The average tog bite, doom, you know he's there. Okay, I know he's there. After that, they're usually going to give you two. It's going to be doom, doom, a double hit. Now, depending on how the first one hits, I'm either going to try to stick them on that double hit or the double after that double. Okay, very patient with this fish. Don't just sit there and you get a bite and you're swinging on them. Let him go ahead and kind of bite on that bait. You feel him down there biting, boom, boom, you feel that bite. Keep letting them, keep letting them bite on that. Now, when you set the hook, you set the hook, it's gonna be a very high hook set. You wanna pull him five, six foot off the bottom out of that wreck, out of them rocks, whatever's on the bottom immediately before he even knows what's going on. So, so you feel that bite, boom, boom, you set the hook, it's gonna be a high hook set and you're gonna reel down fast as you can on him. Your drag, a very tight drag. Lock your drag down on your reel, you know, a very tight drag, you wanna be able to rip him up. I've caught real big togs on just a little piece of skin hooked on their lip on the outside and you know, still got that fish in the boat with, with a drag locked down. You can, once you get him a little bit off the bottom, loosen up your drag a little bit and let him run just that little bit once you get him out of that main structure. But uh, 
and that's pretty much how you're going to fish it. Now, let's say that I get a bite and I miss. So I get that bite, boom, boom, and I do that high hook set and I swing up like that. Same thing, if I'm missing, I'm easing back down into that hole and dropping it back down in there, easing it. I'm not letting it slam back down to the bottom. So all that's key. Like I said, I'm breaking down the season in the bay, what I'm calling a spring and a fall season. I wish I had something up here for y'all to see these water temperatures so how y'all can kind of correlate what I'm saying. But for the most part, the spring season for the tog. Now you can fish for tog year round in the bay. You can go right out, out there right now and you can you go to the deepest water you can find and you, you, know, you can catch a tog. Now I'm talking about going out and we're trying to catch a limited tog. We're trying to go out, you know, get our fish, come back home. So you're gonna be targeting the most upcoming here March. So you got March, April, May. That's what I'm calling the spring season, okay? Every year, obviously the water temperatures vary a little bit each month, but this year, it's a little bit warmer than, than it's been as far as our water temperature now. The average water temperature in May, in the middle of May, is going to be about 50 degrees this year. Give or take a few degrees, I promise you. So that's what I'm estimating it as. At that, I'm fishing deep, okay? So in March, I'm fishing deep. I'm, I'm at the bridge tunnel fishing the deepest water I can find, deeper water, fishing on ledges. That's what I'm fishing on the pylons, on wrecks, okay? 60 foot or more water is usually what I'm targeting when, I, when I'm trying that time of year. That's your starting point. So that's where you're starting deep. And then if you're not catching, you can work your way up a little bit, but that's where you want to start. Now, as, as April comes, that water temperature's obviously creeping up. It's gonna be about, uh, I got it at 57 degrees in the, in the middle of the month, okay? Now I'm doing the exact opposite. I just went deep, now I'm going shallow, okay? So now I'm going, I'm fishing on the tubes, fishing as shallow as 12 foot of water, so where you see the rocks underneath your boat where you're almost thinking you're gonna hit them and you're still catching fish and you don't even know how you almost can't even see them, you know, underneath the boat. That's when this jig really, really comes in handy. So I've been on the boat before with a guy, I'm, I'm using this jig, he's using a one hook bottom rig. I got, you know, my four or five fish in the boat right away. Hey, he ain't got a fish, he's not even getting a bite. You know, what is going on? And I'm over here wearing him out with this jig. Like I said, this jig is very, very effective. This can get the fish riled up, going, get that bite really, really going. Like I said, this, you're not gonna keep it still tr like you traditionally would. When I first fished this jig, what I did was is I dropped it down to the bottom, sat it there, wasn't getting bites, you know, sitting it real still, lifting it up off the bottom a little bit, letting it hover off the bottom. I had got a few bites that way. Then I realized taking this thing, bumping it, moving it, dragging it, that's what's creating a bite with this thing. So when you're fishing on top of the tube and you're dropping down, you're trying to find a hole anyway, that's where the fish is sitting. So you drop down, you're on, on a rock, you're lifting, you're trying to drop down into a deeper rock. Well, when you do, that bait is going directly in his face. Instead of that weight going in his face with that other rig, this bait is going directly in his face. And it's just something about it, they can't stand it. These are great jigs. I've used about every brand there is. This one's bottom sweeper. This is the best one I've ever used. Very effective way to catch them, to catch them on the tube. And this is mainly what I'm using. Doesn't snag as much. That time of year when they come up shallow like that, they're more active anyway and more frisky. And this is the, and this is the way that I catch them. So we're moving on and now we're gonna go to May. May, guess what I'm doing again? I'm going deep again. So we went deep, shallow, deep, okay? Like I said, I wish I could have the temperatures up here for y'all to see the temperatures to kind of correlate what I'm doing here. But now I'm going back deep again. That water's getting warmer. It's getting a little bit too warm for their comfort where they don't really like. They want to go to that deeper water where it stays cool and that temperatures is more stable temperature where it's not changing as much as the shallow water temperatures. When I'm fishing in that deeper water, I'm going back to this rig here. I'm putting the jig away. I fish the jig in the deeper water and it just doesn't seem to be as effective. It, it just really doesn't. The only thing that I will do with this, like I say, I try to keep it as still as I possibly can. So I drop it down, it's going to the bottom, I'm easing it down and hits the bottom. As the boat's moving and rocking, I'm, I'm moving my pole, keeping directly still on the bottom. I don't want my eight ounce weight, whatever it is down there, banging, pushing up sand and doing all that, okay? I don't want that. So I'm holding it still as I can as, I'm, as the boat's bobbing back and forth, keeping that rod still. Uh, I will every once in a while, and, I've, and I have learned this from jig fishing, that if you, take, if you take your rig like that, and let's say I kinda, if I'm on pylons where I maybe no fish are and are not quite biting, which tide has a, lot to, has a lot to do with it, and we're gonna talk about that. But 
what I'll do is, is I'll barely lift it up, pink, pink, and all I'm doing is getting that weight to hit that sand once or twice and kind of dispersing a little bit of sand like a crab or a shrimp or something would be down there, you know, moving that sand. Very curious creatures. They'll come around to see what it is and then your bait's there. So that's just a little, tri uh, little technique that I do use with this one. I'll move on to what I'm calling the fall season and it's gonna be the same trend. That's gonna be from September, October, to November. I'm going deep, I'm going deep, shallow, deep. It's gonna be the same thing. So in September, like I said, I'm going deep with that water temperature is gonna average in the middle of the month. It's gonna be around 73 degrees or so, give or take a few degrees. They're gonna be a little bit deeper in that water column. I'm focusing on deep water. Now this is generally what I'm sticking with. You're going there, you're starting in the deep water, and then, you're, and then you'll work up if you're not getting bites or try to find where the fish are. But that's just generally what I always stick to. Now you got October, we're back to October. Well, guess what? I'm putting this away. I'm going back to the jig because I'm right back on them tubes again in October and I'm jigging these fish up. You'd be amazed by how effective this works. You can, get, you can drop this thing down there, bounce it a few times and catch a fish or two. And I mean, they're just jumping on this thing. It's, it's just unreal the bite, how good of a bite that I've got on this. Uh, it, it, I do like it a lot better fighting the fish on this too. You don't have that weight banging underneath. You can feel just straight fish and it's, you know, it's a good fight. Obviously more lightweight outfit that you can use for this too. So, you know, that's another thing that's uh, beneficial. You're tog fishing, you're holding the pole all day, lighter the better. You know, even though I'm telling you that, you know, this is the pole that I use, a custom pole. I'm not saying you can't come into Ocean Sea Star shop, get a pole that's a whole lot lighter than this custom pole that I made here and that'll be just fine. As we go, as we go, in, we're, so we're shallow, we're in, we're in uh, October, we're shallow, and then we're going to November. What am I doing again? I'm going back deep again. So this is when the fish, they're gonna to start to be pushing out of the bay. This is when they're starting to go to the wrecks. When it starts getting cold, they'll push out, they'll go to the wrecks. Most of the fish, what they'll do is they, is they will push out. Um, a, big, a big thing with a uh, tog is gonna to be tide. So we're gonna go ahead and brush all on that. Tide, you're not gonna have any luck on slack tide. That's one thing. Stay away from slack tide. You don't want slack tide. You want moving tide. You don't want insane moving tide. You don't want it crazy ripping. Um, I don't know, some of y'all may have ever been around the high rise area and all that stuff and you know, been out there in days where that current is just running a million miles an hour and it's just ripping. When it's like that, I'll go find another area. You know, I, I don't want that raging water like that. Another thing I look for when I'm tog fishing is water clarity. If the water's dirty, that's not what I want. And just because the, the surface water's dirty doesn't mean what underneath of it's gonna be dirty, but when water's dirty and, and muddy, they just don't bite good. They really don't. Uh, you'll know when they start picking up, that tie starts slacking off and you'll start catching more oyster toes. You're in the same place as they are. You know, they're, you're in the rocks and everything. They just can't swim out there as much as togs because they have those giant peck fins. They can sit still. A tog can actually move backwards, you know. So not many, not many fish can move forwards and backwards than a tog can. No. We good? That's about it. Anybody? Any questions at all? No?